Our second presenter uh, will be uh, m uh, the, a group from the uh, Tongyuan Christian University, including uh, Ma Dr. Maharani and uh, in, in the group of Dr. Dr. Uh, Yujun Wang. Uh, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So today I would like to present about the Dengue River that happened in Solomon Island. This is a kind of joint work between Solomon Island, Central Weather Bureau Taiwan, and uh, my school, Chengyang Christian University. So as you know that the Dengue River is a kind of factor-borne disease that usually occur on tropical and subtropical islands worldwide. Uh, as you can see here, this is the, the map from WHO in 2013 and it's showing the distribution of the Indian River worldwide, uh, starting from the South America to South Asia, Southeast Asia, and also the Pacific Island. Solomon Island is located on the Pacific Island, so uh, it is important, and, and the Indian River is endemic in there, so it's important for us to, uh, to predict to bring the, the occurrence of dengue fever in near future. Uh, so my name is Ausi Dr. Maharani and I'm speaking here on behalf of, of my professor, Dr. Wang Yuchu, and I'm a master's student in environmental engineering to and Christian University. Uh, this is the map that coming from the Pacific Public Health Surveillance and it shows the whole area of Pacific Islands as you can see there, there is a lot of, there is some disease uh, appear in that map. And uh, Pacific, Public, Pacific Public Health Surveillance is already mentioned about some syndromes that, that usually happen before this, before this uh, disease has happened. And the objectives of this, of this study is first, is we want to observe the daily fever occurrence and weather trends in Solomon Islands, along with the association between both. And to determine the best prediction model to predict daily fever occurrence in Solomon Islands in few weeks ahead. <clears throat> so this is the, the study area of, of Solomon Island, it's quite far from Taiwan, and it's an archipelago, archipelago country and consists from a lot of islands there, and uh, the picture on top is showing the Solomon Islands Meteorological Station's locations. So we use the weather data here from eight stations in Solomon Islands, as you can see there. And it's not a really, uh, it's not a really big uh, country, so it only has around five, 500,000 populations, and they have a tropical tropical climate, high and uniform temperature, humidity, and rainfall. And in this study, we use two kinds of data source. The first is the daily fever data, and the second is the weather data. Speaking about the daily fever data, <coughs> this data we obtained from the Solomon, Solomon Island surveillance data is, is not a cl clinically diagnosed data. It's, it's coming from uh, the, the record of the drug store. So it, it's, it's like this. So when people, when people feel that they're sick, uh, that they feel a little bit have fever or, or something like that, and the, the, the pharmacist will be just report on that. So this kind of data will, uh, will, will create the uncertainty of the model. And the weather data is, is, is we obtained from the Salmon Islands Meteorological Service Division. It's, from 1951 to 2017. But in this study, we only use uh, the data from 2014 to 2017, since the daily data is from 2014 to 2017. Uh, we propose the RMR model or autoregressive integrated moving average. First is, uh, is also known as Box Jenkins approach, which is, which is defined um, into three into three met, into three steps. The first is the uh, model identification, and the second, and the second is the parameter parameter estimation, and the third is the model checking. 
and we're using the previous observations to make predictions of future failures. And also, we identify, identify P, D, and Q is necessary to build a time series ERIMA model. And the dependent variable we, we used in the study was the dengue fever case, and the independent variable is weather variables and dengue population index. The dengue population index here is the monthly average of dengue occurrence in Solomon Island. And here's the first, the, the time series of, of the dengue fever in the, of the dengue fever in Solomon Island from 2014 to 2017. <coughs> Uh, starting from 2014 to 2016, the number is relatively low until until it it, it reached the peak in 2000 in, in the end of 2016 until the beginning of 2017. So uh, why this happening is um, as I read the report from the Red Cross is is because uh, there is an, a big earthquake hitting the Solomon Islands. In the end of 2006, it is quite a big earthquake. Room. If I'm not mistaken, it's 7.8 magnitude, and after that, it follows with a heavy rainfall. So it's, I think, it's a perfect, it's a perfect combination of a mosquito breeding. So that's why the, the number is like really high. It's, uh, it's uh, significantly raised, and <clears throat> we, we break down into 2014. 2015, 16, and 17. As we can see, that the outbreak is declared here in the September, and then the number is slightly going down on April 2017. So this is the the weather data that we use in this study. The first is the minimum and maximum temperature in Solomon Islands, since it is a tropical country. So the average the average temperature is are quite a bit high, around 24 to, to 32 degrees Celsius. And also it has the, the high, high number of rainfall. Uh, it's around 3,000 to 5,000 millimeters annually. And the relative humidity here is around 70 to 90 percent. And first we conduct the correlation analysis between uh, the daily fever data itself and the weather, and it, it shows that the maximum temperature, cumulative rainfall, and the daily population index have the correlation with the daily fever, although the correlation is, is not uh, really significant. <coughs> and we, we do some, some combinations of the models with ARIMA. The first is we conduct the, the, the the prediction with all the variables before we do the correlation analysis. So here's the result of, if we put all the weather parameters here, the, the model is not really good. And after that, uh, we go to, to the prediction with just the maximum temperature itself. And also the, uh, the parameter here, uh, we use the root mean square error as the, as the performance as the model performance parameters. And the next, we also use the cumulative rainfall itself. And again, the, the, the RMAC number is not really good. And we combine the maximum temperature and cumulative rainfall. And since this is since this two these two weather parameters is is have the most correlated with uh, with the daily fever occurrence. But again, the, the, the RMC number is quite a bit high. So we go to the next model, which is the daily population, the, the, the daily population index itself. Among all the models, this one has the lowest root mean square error. It means that this model has uh, have the, best, the best performance among the other models that we, we have tried. But since since we, we want to we want to use the weather the weather variables in this model, we want to try we want we want to try to predict the 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 daily the daily fever occurrence in Solomon Island using the weather. So we also input the, the these two correlated weather variables, which is maximum temperature and cumulative rainfall into the model, and here is the result. 
although the number is, is not really uh, is not really lowest among the other, but this this model is 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 a little bit better than the other model. So uh, I would like to to explain about why the cumulative rainfall and the maximum temperature have the associate have the association with dengue fever in this in the study. This explanation is coming from uh, the, the previous study already conducted by other researchers. The first is the increasing survival time ensuring the development cycle of mosquitoes. So cumulative rainfall does that way and it, it's resulting in an increased number of breeding size and adult female mosquitoes. And then if you see because uh, the dengue fever is a common is a common disease in urban areas. So uh, we often see the containers or the flower pots is also which is common in urban area where where often become an important habitat of mosquito. And the second is from the maximum temperature. The dengue virus can grow and spread and spread in mosquitoes faster at high temperature, and then can slow when temperatures are lower or fluctuate. And the replication and transmission efficiency of dengue viruses were temperature dependent as well, within a range of 18 and until 35. So that's why it, it is um, it is a common disease in tropical and subtropical area. So uh, I would like to say about the four syndromes that Pacific, uh, the the Pacific, that 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 happening in Pacific Islands. The four syndrome itself has um, it's a diarrhea, acute fever, and rash, influenza like illness, and prolonged fever. This, this four, this four syndromes is uh, is class, classified as a, as a Pacific Pacific syndrome to identify the the disease that will that will occur when this uh, when this when this syndrome is increasing. Except the acute fever and rash, the number of the, sy the syndromes like diarrhea, influenza, like illness, and prolonged fever is a little bit high. So we try to put these this three, three syndromes, which is diarrhea, influenza, like illness, and prolonged fever, into the, into the model, and it result, uh, it result, it, it result in this. Uh, we try to make a prediction based on this four, based on these three uh, syndromes, and the number of the root mean square error is quite a bit high. So it means like um, it, it doesn't it doesn't uh, up, up get the prediction really well. <clears throat> so the first conclusion I would like to discuss is. The weather variables, the maximum temperature and cumulative rainfall, and the population index were added as requesters to increase the model performance. And due to the data limitation, the model's uncertainty is probably high, like uh, I, I said to you before. And the combination of maximum temperature and cumulative rainfall and the population index generate better prediction. And in the near future, we we hope that we can get more data from Solomon Islands, so uh, we expect to get more data, so we can uh, so it, so we can uh, generate a better prediction for the daily fever in Solomon Islands. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you.